Let's take a broader look now at the midterms as the president is on the campaign trail to support Republicans. And ads in support of his Supreme Court pick are hitting the airwaves. A perfect time for Politics Monday. We're joined by Amy Walter of the Cook Political Report and Eliana Johnson of Politico. And welcome to both of you, Politics Monday. So we just heard that report from Yamish in Nevada. Amy, first of all, what does Nevada look like and how is immigration playing as an issue this fall? Um, there's no doubt that, that that Nevada race is a great place to go because it's a very, very competitive race. It's also one of the few opportunities that Democrats have to play offense. They're mostly playing defense in the Senate this year, defending 26 seats. There are only nine Republicans up. Immigration, though, is really interesting to see how this plays. We know how Republicans are going to play it. We've heard it uh, on the campaign trail in 2017 and 2018 in some of these special elections. Democrats are for open borders. Democrats aren't doing enough to, to um, keep bad people like MS-13 out. Um, the president himself talked a lot about that today when he had a ceremony at the White House with ICE agents saying that of people who are saying things like abolish ICE or making criticisms of ICE, for people to demean you, they have no idea what strength is, it's really sad, right? These people have loud mouths or something like that. So they're going to make that an issue. I don't know what Democrats are going to do on immigration. I looked through that the Cooker Report, we looked through all the ads that have been run from January until uh, the end of July. Democrats in these primaries talked overwhelmingly about health care, very little about immigration. Republicans talked a lot about immigration, mm -hmm. very little about health care. So I don't know that they're going to make the separation issue an issue, whether they, I don't know if they want to go and make that a priority as much as they want to make health care a priority in their advertising. Eliana, how do you see immigration now playing? This is the president. We've heard so much about it in the past several months. You know, when the tax cut bill passed several months ago, the idea was that Republicans were going to campaign on this bill from coast to coast. And I've really been surprised, surveying Republican ads, how few Republicans have been campaigning on this tax cut bill and how many have been campaigning on the issue of immigration. I think what Republicans saw was Donald Trump seize on this issue so successfully in 2016, and Republicans are trying to do the same thing in 2018. The open question for me is whether Republicans uh, at large will be able to take an issue that worked so well for Donald Trump and translate it into an issue that works for the party. Well, and that and that's the question on immigration, on on the tax cuts. Amy, and another point that, that's been raised is here is the president. Last year, he spent a lot of time criticizing Republicans and Democrats in Congress, but his own party. He said, they're do-nothings, uh, they're not uh, supporting my agenda. Now he's going out right. every week saying to the voters, Vote for this person. Vote for this now, person. Vote for this good Republican. Right. Even though I've told you over and over again that Washington's broken, Congress is a disaster. A swamp. I've said a swamp. <laughs> I've said terrible things about many of these people that I'm going and campaigning for, but do it because it's important to me, not just because of who, I, you know, because you like me personally, he's saying to voters, but because if you put Democrats in charge, they're going to impeach me. Right? We know what their goal ultimately is. So if you don't want them to impeach me, you got to support Republicans, even though, let's face it, they're not very good. But what is also interesting, when I look at what the president has done thus far, like we looked at the special election in, in Ohio, and the president came and campaigned there, the vice president came and campaigned there. But when you look at what turnout was like in the parts of that district that were heavily Trump, that went heavily Trump in 2016, they turned out about 10 points lower than the parts of the district that voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016. So even when you have the president there, mm -hmm. right, and he can't go to 435 districts, he can't go to every single race in this country. Um, but even when he does, the motivating factor of getting those folks out is not as intense as the people who dislike him who are going to turn out no matter what. Motivation's a big part of this, isn't it? Absolutely. And I think Republicans are suffering right now from what helped them so much in the midterms when President Obama was president. Uh, Republicans took back uh, the upper and lower cha chamber in uh, 2014 and 2010, the midterms under Obama, because uh, their opposition to Obama motivated them to get out to the polls. I think that helped in 2016, the loathing of Hillary Clinton. Uh, now, Democrats feel the same way about President Trump as Republicans felt about Obama and Clinton. And, uh, you know, 
there's sort of a cliched slogan that you have to have more than no or opposition to a candidate uh, as a platform. I actually think nope. that's wrong. That's right. I think Democrats can run on a pure anti-Trump yep. platform, and we're seeing that that's uh, plenty motivating for base voters in the party. It's yeah. that anti-anti that it's turns the, voters right. out every that, time. That's right. Remember, Obama tried to do the same thing in his midterm elections to say, this is a referendum on me if you came and voted for me and you loved me so much. Come and vote in the midterms right. for these candidates. And they didn't. All right. One other thing I want to ask you both about is uh, all the while they're getting ready for the midterms, the president has nominated Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court, a reliable conservative. Both sides are now out with spending a lot of money on TV spots, uh, otherwise trying to either support this nomination or or uh, or knock it down. And I, we've got two quick examples. One, of, and, and by the way, the opponents are being outspent seven to one. Uh, but here are two quick examples of what both sides are saying about Brett Kavanaugh. The Senate is about to consider Brett Kavanaugh to be the next Supreme Court justice. Kavanaugh refused to uphold key patient protections in the past, and if he joins the court, he could vote to end these protections for good. Tell Senator Manchin to keep fighting for people with pre-existing conditions. Vote no on Brett Kavanaugh. Why won't Joe Donnelly commit to supporting Kavanaugh? Is he more interested in siding with Chuck Schumer and Elizabeth Warren than Hoosiers? Has he forgotten who he represents? Tell Joe Donnelly his vote on Kavanaugh is something you won't forget. So, Eliana, the the, uh, the supporters of uh, Mr. Kavanaugh, Judge Kavanaugh, are saying, uh, especially to these Democrats in red states, you've got to do this. Speaking of an issue Republicans and conservatives are not lackadaisical about, <laughs> uh, putting judges on the bench. They are outspending uh, Kavanaugh's opponents seven to one, and the timing of this could not have been more favorable to Donald Trump coming right before a midterm where the geography uh, is throwing tremendous hurdles up for Democrats several red state Democrats on the ballot, and that seven to one spending is uh, conservatives running ads, putting a tremendous amount of pre pressure for conservative Democrats to vote in Kavanaugh's favor right before the midterm elections. Um, I think that's exactly right, and I think at the, the other challenge for Democrats right now is there's one person who's giving them an outrage a day, something for them to get really excited and energized about, that's president. Uh, Kavanaugh does not excite them in the same way, in part because nobody knows who he is. I think the hearings that start on September 4th will give us some indication about whether there is something in there, whether it's in his record or the way he answers some of the questions, that will give liberals more of an uh, opportunity to derail this. Two weeks from today. Right. Politics Monday. Amy Walter, Eliana Johnson. Thank you both. Thank You're you. welcome.